Hi everyone, this is Chelsea from the North Bergen Public Library, and welcome to Book Snippets. I will be reading a short excerpt from a book available to be borrowed from Hoopla. To access Hoopla and borrow this book, visit www.mbpl.org. Today I'll be reading a short passage from The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. On a sticky August evening, two weeks before her due date, Ashima Gongoli stands in the kitchen of a Central Square apartment, combining Rice Krispies and Planters Peanuts and chopped red onion in a bowl. She adds salt, lemon juice, thin slices of green chili pepper, wishing there was mustard oil to pour into the mix. Ashima has been consuming this concoction throughout her pregnancy, a humble approximation of the snack sold for pennies on Calcutta sidewalks and on railway platforms throughout India, spilling from newspaper cones. Even now that there is barely space inside her, it is the one thing she craves. Tasting from a cupped palm, she frowns. As usual, there's something missing. She stares blankly at the pegboard behind the countertop where her cooking utensils hang, all slightly coated with grease. She wipes sweat from her face with the free end of her sari, her swollen feet ache against speckled gray linoleum. Her pelvis aches from the baby's weight. She opens a cupboard, the shelves lined with a grimy yellow and white checkered paper she's been meaning to replace, and reaches for another onion, frowning again as she pulls at its crisp magenta skin. A curious warmth floods her abdomen, followed by a tightening so severe she doubles over, gasping without sound, dropping the onion with a thud on the floor. The sensation passes, only to be followed by a more enduring spasm of discomfort. In the bathroom, she discovers, on her underpants, a solid streak of brownish blood. She calls out to her husband, Ashok, a doctoral candidate in electrical engineering at MIT, who is studying in the bedroom. He leans over a car table. The edge of their bed, two twin mattresses pushed together under a red and purple batik spread, serves as his chair. When she calls out to Ashok, she doesn't say his name. Ashima never thinks of her husband's name when she thinks of her husband, even though she knows perfectly well what it is. She has adopted his surname, but refuses, for propriety's sake, to utter his first. It's not the type of thing Bengali wives do. Like a kiss or caress in a Hindi movie, a husband's name is something intimate, and therefore unspoken, cleverly patched over. And so, Instead of saying Ashok's name, she utters the interrogative that has come to replace it, but translates roughly as, Are you listening to me? At dawn, a taxi is called to ferry them through deserted Cambridge streets, up Massachusetts Avenue and past Harvard Yard to Mount Auburn Hospital. Ashima registers, answering questions about the frequency and duration of the contractions as Ashok fills out the forms. She is seated in a wheelchair and pushed through the shining, brightly lit corridors, whisked into an elevator more spacious than her kitchen. On the maternity floor, she is assigned to a bed by window in a room at the end of the hall. She is asked to remove her Mushidabad silk sari in favor of a flowered con gown that, to her mild embarrassment, only reaches her knees. A nurse offers to fold up the sari, but, exasperated by the six slippery yards, ends up stuffing the material into Ashima's sleep loop suitcase. If you enjoyed this expert and would like to read the full book, visit Hoopla via our website or download the app.